You are a productivity expert. It's just that you're not productive. YouTube is full of rise and grinders giving you their 5 a.m. 25 step output optimized productivity routine. And if you're anything like me, you have them all memorized. You know the tips, tricks, and details. You have set up the apps. You have read the reading list. You have even made a meticulous action plan to start achieving all of your goals, but you just haven't gotten started. This is because you're stuck in what I call armchair productivity. Armchair productivity occurs when you are using learning about productivity as a hobby to avoid, well, being productive. You are choosing productivity content over productivity habits and you end up setting up way more systems than you can actually carry out. This may make you feel productive, but it's actually getting in the way of you living your dream life. In this video, we are going to walk you through why that is not helping and is actually hurting your productivity in the long term. And we are going to give you a few tips by the end to help jumpstart you out out of productivity limbo and into your plans and goals. But before we get into all that, one lightning fast way to boost your productivity is to check out this week's sponsor, which is Magical. Magical is a free Chrome extension that uses AI to crunch through a ton of repetitive tasks. It takes one click to install, it works on nearly every website, and it completely automates those boring tasks on your to-do list that you have been avoiding. For me, the biggest game changer has been the automation tools for my email inboxes. Between my day job Job and managing this YouTube channel, I do a ton of email correspondence and completely drafting unique messages from scratch every time I have to send a message can be really tedious. But with Magical, you can just create a simple template and their AI will use context to generate a fully formed email. And for an even simpler option, their auto response feature will generate an entire message at the click of a button. And it's not just for email, of course. Magical can also update forms, adjust spreadsheets, scrape data from websites, and so much more. And it's all totally free. So use the link in my description box below, click download and boom, Magical will be installed on your browser, ready to help you wherever you go on the web. So check out that link below or head over to getmagical.com to get started. Thank you to Magical for sponsoring and let's get into the video. So first let's talk about what is keeping you in armchair productivity. The main thing is that you are using productivity as a way to procrastinate. We end up consuming productivity content to feel energized and feel like we are being productive. And this is also what we are doing when we choose to to map out whole new systems, we are seeking the dopamine hit of feeling productive rather than enjoying the benefits of actually achieving productivity. To get over this, I think you need to just let the perfectionism go. If you are watching my video right now, you are also probably the kind of person who wants to set up an immaculate plan before you even get started so that you have a roadmap of how to achieve your dreams from point A to point B all the way through to the end of your goal whenever that ends if it's at the end of the year or the end of the day. But what you are doing when you plan over and over and over again is you're just avoiding doing the actual work. Because once you start doing the actual work, you're going to quickly realize that you are not perfect. It sounds so simple, but it is really true. A quote I think about a lot is a quote by Reid Hoffman, who is the co-founder of LinkedIn. And he says, if you aren't embarrassed by the first version of your product, you have launched too late. Obviously, he is speaking about products and launching in a business sense, but I think this really also applies to our personal productivity systems. You have to be bad at something before you can be good at something, including productivity. Now, the way you can get over this is to first stop accepting free advice. In our day-to-day -day lives, we are often very careful about the types of people we will let give us free advice. When I am at the gym, I am not going to accept workout advice from some random guy who comes up to me thinking he understands my form and my exercises better than I do. In fact, I have a personal trainer who I talk to about my workouts, so she is the person who's allowed to give me advice, not some random dude. So why don't we do the same thing with our productivity consumption? Every time you go on YouTube or Instagram or open your podcast app, there is a person who is trying to give you free advice. And if you are naturally a curious person who's very interested in productivity and behavior change, of course you are going to open all those videos in new tabs. Of course you are going to keep saving those TikToks and those Instagram reels for later. But this is just stalling you out. This is keeping you focused on productivity content and not focused on your actual real goals. So I recommend doing a free advice detox by avoiding concerns 
consuming anything new on productivity or self-development for a period of time. Could be a week or a month. Just put down the social media, the audiobooks, the podcasts. Give your brain time to just ruminate on all of the things it already knows instead of learning something new. I am really trying to do this for 2024. This is a loose map of getting things done by David Allen, which is the productivity system I am taking in to 2024. But you can see sort of how I'm paring down my system to be uh, only for information that I understand, for tools that I already know, and I'm sort of just trying to distill it down to those very simple things instead of adding in all of this productivity knowledge, habit knowledge that everyone on the internet seems to have. Yes, I am totally aware I am part of the problem, but I still think this is a really relevant video to make. Now we're in the portion of the video that is gonna cover how to get started. We've already done the mindset shift that you need to undergo to stop prepping and start actually doing. I wanna give you some practical tips for how to do that, basically. We're gonna start with making it attractive. James Clear has this sentiment I really like where he says the anticipation of an experience can often feel better than the attainment of it. He talks about this in his second law of habit formation, which is making your habit attractive. So his argument here is that you need to make the habit you are trying to achieve as attractive as just thinking about the habit. You need to make working out feel as good as already being fit. So in this example, productivity or being productive is our habit. And we need to make this feel as good as consuming as consuming productivity content. So being productive needs to feel as attractive as consuming productivity content. An easy way to do this and a great way to kickstart your productivity right now to start doing this habit today is to just set up your workspace the way your favorite productivity content creator sets up their productivity workspace. So for me, it's always the girlies who have a super clean desk, a hot cup of coffee and an aesthetic mug and a candle lit and they are opening their to-do list system and just getting to work. So I will essentially emulate the productivity I want to feel like I have while I am trying to be productive. It is amazing what this kind of environment design can actually do for you. You may have heard of doing something like this as romanticizing your habits. I think it is a really underrated tip to romanticize the habit that you're doing by making yourself feel as if you are your favorite productivity productivity influencer or your favorite YouTube workout influencer or whatever. Sometimes that's going to be a purchase. Maybe you buy the same set that they have and then you work out in that workout set. But more often than not, you can create the feeling that you are seeing on screen without buying anything at all. And just putting a lot of effort into environment design to sort of gain that sense of clarity or activity that your favorite content creator seems to have. Next, I want you to minimize distractions. Put your phone on focus mode mode right now. Close your distractions, close out of all those extra tabs you have, put your phone in another room and do not multitask. To help stop myself from getting distracted, I like to put on music that is specifically designed for deep focus. I need some sort of audio stimulation. I don't know what it is about my brain, but I need something going on in the ears in order to be able to really focus. I usually gravitate towards things like podcasts or YouTube videos because it's sort of a huge amount of sensory stimulation that my brain really likes or thinks it likes it doesn't actually like it because it doesn't actually contribute to deep focus and getting my work done. If you are watching a YouTube video or listening to a podcast while you are also trying to get your work done, you are multitasking and your brain is not being effective. No podcasts, no YouTube. Find yourself a deep focus playlist and some music with no words so that your brain isn't trying to listen to the message of the song and also focus. I actually have a playlist on YouTube of a bunch of videos that I created that have either a deep focus music bent to them or are are just soundtracks from video games and movies that I really like because that is the kind of like wordless musical stimulation that really helps me get into the zone and focus on the tasks at hand. The most important thing to look for if you are looking for something to listen to on YouTube or in Spotify or something is to find one with no ads. Your brain is not going to be able to get into deep focus mode if it is also having to click back into the YouTube window to fast forward an ad or to skip an ad every 10 seconds. If in between your Spotify songs, your brain has to then switch gears to hearing about a car or something. It is going to really, really distract you. So a really important thing is finding something with no ads and no words, just music that you can sort of zone into. Now, if this feels really hard or unpleasant, you have a hard time leaving your phone behind, you have a hard time not multitasking, try using the 10 minute rule. 
Sometimes you hear this described as the two minute rule, the five minute rule, the 15 minute rule. There's lots of different minute based rules out there, but I like to use 10 minutes. Get yourself a timer like this. I recommend an analog timer, not using your phone if you can. If you don't have an analog timer, your phone is fine, but I will leave this one linked on Amazon. It was super cheap, but get something that is preferably not connected to your phone or your computer where the other distractions live. Set a timer for 10 minutes and tell yourself you're just going to be productive for 10 minutes only. You don't have to do this all day. You don't even have to do it for an hour. You're just gonna put on your deep focused playlist and work your heart out for 10 minutes. I guarantee by the end of this 10 minutes, you are going to find yourself invested in what you are doing. This is because getting started is actually the hardest part. Once you do that, the rest is easy. So just tell yourself it's for a short amount of time. It's not for forever. It's not for all day. And then you will have given your brain permission to get started on something easy because your brain can wrap itself around a 10 minute timer. It can say, oh, 10, doing something for 10 minutes, that's no problem. Doing something for an hour, oh God, that's a a lot of work. But I think you will find that once you are 10 minutes in, your momentum will be very, very high and you'll just be able to keep going. Oh my God, this is the end of my notebook. Oh, rest in peace, this graph paper notebook that I've been using for like the whole time I've had this channel. Not to worry, I have blank paper. So we talked about the 10 minute rule helping you to build momentum. I'm going to talk about momentum a little bit more. You wanna do stuff at the beginning to help yourself build momentum. So yes, 10 minute timer is great for building momentum, but also you can help build momentum by checking small tasks. Look at your pr productivity management system, look at your task list, wherever you are squirreling away, all of the tasks and things you need to get done. Take a look at that and identify the small tasks that you can accomplish in a few minutes or less. Chances are you have been sitting on an email or avoiding paying a bill or canceling a membership, but you just haven't done it yet. Well, if you wanna get in the zone with productivity, you can help clear out your productivity system to feel more clean and build momentum by getting a lot of small wins early with these tiny tasks. This is going to help your brain feel like it's winning. Now, checking off these small tasks that you've been sitting on, it's not the end all be all of being productive, but checking off tiny tasks is going to make your brain feel like it is winning, like it has accomplished something in the time period that you have set out to be productive. So you can start with a few small tasks just to build momentum. So now what do you do when you are done checking off small tasks? I am glad you asked. The thing that's going to emerge as you check off small tasks is bigger, larger tasks that you really don't know what to do with. So let's say your task list looks like this. You have email Kathy, schedule haircut. You have been going through and checking off your small tasks to build momentum. And so you've emailed Kathy. That takes five minutes. You say, what's up, Kathy? That's good to go. You also schedule your haircut. That takes a quick 15 minute phone call with your uh, hairdresser to just see when she's available, see when you're available, make it all work. Those two things are done. Now you get to this task, which is to set up a website. And your brain starts to go, oh God, I don't wanna do that. Why do I have this on my list? I don't need to do that. I should just go do something else. Your brain is doing that because what you're looking at here lacks a lot of clarity. You're trying to process it as a simple task, just like emailing Kathy, but what it actually is is a project. The difference between a project and a task is that a project has multiple steps or multiple tasks within it, and a task is an immediate action that can be taken right away. So once you have enough momentum and you have cleared out all of your basic tasks, you want to take a look at these projects and start breaking them down into their smallest components. You want to break them down until you have a set of small immediate actions that can be taken or that you can get started on right away without even thinking. So for setting up a website, I'm gonna go ahead and make this look like a circle instead of a square to indicate that it's not a task, but it is a project. For setting up a website, maybe one of the steps is going to be choosing a domain name. You also will need to register. Now, maybe for registering your domain name, you already have a platform that you like to register with, or maybe you don't, at which point you'd also need to turn this into a project and put a step underneath that and say, research domain posts right? So you can find the best one, the one that you want to use. And you go on and on with like hire a developer or map out site 
outline. This could also be uh, information architecture for those of you who are in the website business like I am. Basically, you want to take this main project of setting up a website and you want to break it down into its smallest components. So each of these tasks may also have even yet smaller components underneath them, and that's totally okay. In order to hire a developer, you are probably going to have to have some sort of task related to putting an application on the internet or reaching out to developers that you know, or putting together a criteria for what kind of developer you want to hire. If you want to do a site outline, you're going to need a list of pages that you want to have on your website. You're going to need to know the purpose of your website. So maybe it's outlining the purpose of your website. Basically, this is a project. It's going to have multiple steps and you want to be breaking down those steps into immediate actions that you can take so that at its smallest component, you can get started on something underneath setting up a website that feels just like scheduling a haircut. And you will find that once you have a list of projects with next actions that are so easy to take, you could do them immediately immediately, you will have a really solid base from which to keep going. I think a lot of us let our productivity systems get so cluttered with things that are tasks that are really short that we need to do, and we end up procrastinating on everything because we also mix in their projects that have no clarity. So we think about our productivity systems that we've set up, and we just think of that icky feeling of like, oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, I can't get this done. And we let that feeling guide us back into procrastinating on productivity with productivity content or with setting up a whole new system when really what we need to do is set up for ourselves an environment that we think is attractive, a way to get productive that we think is fun and enjoyable for us. We need to minimize our distractions. We need to take everything out. We need to build our momentum and start small. And then we need to be mapping out our projects so that the next time we come to this space, we know right where to get started. Once you've gotten started, you're going to realize very quickly the importance of personal data gathering. Gaining knowledge about what works for you is so much more valuable than just gaining knowledge about what works for everyone generally. So I recommend keeping a note somewhere of what is working and what isn't working so that you can refine the systems you're setting out for yourself to be better and actually work for you instead of just memorizing general productivity advice. If you want to lead a more fulfilling life that is tailored to you, check out this video I have right here next to my head about your values and how they intersect with your goals. Or if you just want to do something a little bit more productive and meaningful, you can close out of YouTube right now. I promise I won't judge you. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I hope to see you in the next one.